But I now recognize the gentlelady from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon, for five minutes. Thank you, Chairman Cicilline. Well, as this uh, committee's investigation has revealed, big tech has relied on creating barriers to entry as a means of building up and maintaining monopolies, you know, whether it's Apple uh, making arbitrary rules for direct competitors to use their app store or Amazon using a vendor's own sales information to undercut their business. You know, it appears that the time has come when Congress has to take action. So I'm particularly concerned about the impact of gatekeeper techniques on user privacy, and so are my constituents. Um, so I'd, I'd like to focus my question on the network effects of Facebook and Google, because those platforms are so dominant. That's where so many of my constituents really encounter privacy concerns. The self-reinforcing nature of those companies makes it difficult for users to leave when they've been harmed and makes it hard for emergency company, emergency, emerging companies to draw new users onto their platforms. And what we've seen is that Facebook and Google exploit their relationship by continuously lowering privacy standards while profiting hand over fist from their growing cache of user data. Um, so I'm hearing that there's some solutions to this issue, particularly around fostering real competition in the digital marketplace, raising privacy standards and user, user data uh, for user data usage and empowering consumers. So um, Ms. Slayman, can you talk to me about the connection between user privacy, data portability or interoperability? Yes, thank you, Congresswoman. Um, so first, I want to be clear, I, I don't think that competition will be sufficient to fully address the consumer privacy concerns that uh, public knowledge has and that I, I'm sure your constituents have. So we still will need um, federal privacy legislation to protect users. However, I do think um, users are already frustrated by not having their privacy protected on these platforms, and they might like to leave but they feel locked in because of those network effects that you've described. Um, if I'm a frustrated Facebook user, and I am, <laughs> I would like to leave the platform, and I, uh, I can't because I have around 1,000 Facebook friends who are not switching to an alternative platform with me. Um, that makes it much harder for a startup to um, convince uh, investors that they're going to be successful. Investors know that this lock-in effect is impacting users. Um, so it's a really difficult problem for users, for entrepreneurs, um, to try to provide a more privacy protective service or to switch to a more privacy protective service. So interoperability would address that concern. I could switch to the new network and still communicate back with my friends who have not decided yet to make the switch. Um, I could benefit from those privacy protections on the new network and not be isolated from people who are on the incumbent network. That's interesting. I mean, one of the difficulties in dealing with the issues that we're digging into on this committee is it can get pretty wonky in trying to translate it um, for people who are not so deep in the weeds is, is a problem. Um, so as I try to translate the connection, um, do I have it correct that if, for example, a new social networking service wanted to offer stronger privacy protections, that some of the things we're talking about here today could help someone switch over to the new service and enjoy the new privacy protections without losing their homeroom moms group or their class um, reunion um, Facebook group or something like that? Yes, I think that's right. So the question about groups is a fairly specific one that we would want to um, make sure. I think that's something that the regulator could work on um, to see whether groups can, can be um, shared across networks. But certainly, uh, it's important to be able to communicate back with um, friend network connections that you've made on uh, the incumbent social network, in this case, Facebook. Okay, um, I, I would like to seek unanimous consent to enter two articles into the record. The first is an article from USA Today dated February 1, 2021, and it's entitled, Do Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube Censor Conservatives? Claims Not Supported by the Facts, New Research Says. And the second is a new research report from uh, New York University dated February 2021, entitled, False Accusation, 
the unfounded claims that social media companies censor conservatives. And with that, I would yield back. Without objection, and the gentleman yields back.